What you see behind me is a madman trying to cause a fire. We're going to try and cook a DC hub. In this video, Heiner and I oh, test to destruction our DC hub. Cool! It's on fire! Maybe we'll succeed this time. <laughs> Last time we tried, but we reached some limits where we couldn't put more current through it, but we're prepared this time. We, instead of using one inverter, we're using two now. The point of this really, it, w there is a serious side to it, apart from the fact that we want to see smoke, is <laughs> that we've got over 250 uh, Egon DC hubs now in circulation. We're well past our testing period, but when we tried to destroy one before, it was a bit disappointing because it was actually fine, even though we had put a massive amount of current through it. We're now actually going to we want to see actually how much it can really take. We know it can take enough. How much can it take? The Egon DC Hub is a unique device that Heiner and I developed back in 2019. It greatly simplifies DC installations by replacing many components. This should look familiar to you. Nullifying the need for a bus bar, crimps and heat shrink, while significantly reducing voltage drop and simplifying workshop installation and diagnostics when compared to a traditional DC installation. So we've got a two kilowatt inverter times two and, and we have that to disconnect the battery in an emergency and a fire extinguisher behind us just in case. We should be wearing white things like myth yeah, we Mythbusters. Yeah. The cables that we're using to hook up the inverters are way too small for what we do. We are aware of that. The only reason we're doing that is because we are limited with the connection terminal size on the DC hub. Because obviously this is not meant to have 200 amps going through it. It's only set up for 60 amps. So the biggest cable we can get in there is uh, 6 BNS or 2 8 BNS cables. And that's what we are using. So let's see how that goes. Uh, from which side would you be filming? From that side, hey? So Yeah, yep. so we've got the window. <clears throat> Both into there. Both into there. Both negatives into there. So, so okay. So just leave it a little bit longer. Yep. It doesn't have to be yep. particularly beautiful. Yeah. So what we're going to do, uh, we have got two 2000 watt inverters and to those inverters we've got two 2000 watt heat guns connected. Good thing is on the heat guns we can turn them on and then slowly dial the heating up and with that we can change the current that we'll be drawing through the DC hub. And we're going to take it step by step. Last time we left it at 140 amps, we couldn't go any higher for a longer period of time. So I think we start with 150 and we're going to be using half and half the power out of the inverters and see how long we can keep going. I hope we get 200 amps, but let's see. So instead of a fuse, we'll just be using a copper link here because we can't get a fuse big enough. And to reduce the voltage drop on the surface, we're just going to solder this into the fuse holder with a big 300 watt soldering iron. So this is how our little experiment is going to work. We have got a multimeter to measure the battery voltage. Then we've got a multimeter to measure the voltage at the connectors, so we know how much voltage drop we're getting over the whole installation. We can see the voltage on the connector right here. Then we've got a clamp meter to measure the current that we're drawing through. And we've got a thermal imaging camera where we can actually monitor the temperature of the DC hub itself. And we've also got another little infrared thermometer. You see current? What's that look like? Cables are starting to warm up. You see how the cables are starting to warm? Oh uh, yeah, a lot actually. Okay, not a lot. I guess you would expect them to. Yeah. Are warm to the touch? No. No. 82 degrees. And we are fluctuating at around 150 amps. It's going from 140 to 170. 
We've got 12.8 volt at the batteries, 12.3 <laughs> at the connector. So it's half a so it means half a volt, half a volt loss from there and there. 150 amps. 150 amps. It's actually including the cables to the unit yeah, itself. Not very much. <laughs> and that is also including that little connector there. Yeah. Don't touch it. No, probably not. I think. Not yet, but that's about to get very, very hot. Yes. It's a couple of minutes later and we are... We are past 120 degrees on that little connection strip. So on that connection strip there, which is going to get hot. Our fuse itself is warming up. Fuse, I mean the bridge. That's at 100 degrees. The rest of the board is looking okay. You can see the ground connections on the board. You can see where the current is flowing with the thermal imaging. The big connector is quite cool. Not hot at all, mm -hmm. but it's doing what it's rated right for. Let's crank that up a bit more. We're putting 200 amp through a 60 amp connector at the moment. Yeah. The connector is starting to melt. Oh, it is. The solder joint is actually the solder, the solder joint is coming to apart. apart. Yeah. And these are quite hot. We've got about 60 degrees on the positive here. Then the board itself is 70, 80 degrees somewhere there. Some parts getting up to 100. Yeah, I can see the solder bubbling. Yeah. The board is not bulging though. No. The board is still okay, the solder is melting. That yeah. little tiny connection there is handling 200 amp at the moment. It is still going, Andrew. Oh, that is seriously hot now. That is the board at 200 amp. It's starting to smell really bad. Yes. <laughs> but it's still not Eating breaking. There now. So that's the longest part. Longest the part the longest possible part. And it is where the DC DC chargers are connected. So that is where you want all that strength. It's almost three times. Yes. That the yeah. rate it, is, of it is over three it's times. Over three times, yeah. the rate of time. So we are so putting it'll be 180 or three times, so yeah. it's 200 amps. <clears throat> I mean I wouldn't say that is okay anymore. I think it's not sellable no, anymore. No, it's, it's, it's broken. <laughs> We're, but we're, it is still going. Well done. We've succeeded in, in, in... I haven't brought it yet. It's still working. This cable is hot. This cable is not very hot. So that's obviously turned up. That's, yeah, that, that might be pushing a bit more current. That's going in overload now. <laughs> okay. That's true. So now, can we try those two? Yes, let's do it. And turn these off. Ah! It just did it. That was it. What was the crack? The crack was actually... The cup. The, oh, the cup. And there's fire. We managed it. We managed it. Cool. It's on fire. We, we. It is actually really on fire. No, it's really on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 200 amp is enough to kill it. No, no. <laughs> I'm not concerned putting ADM through that connector for a long period of time. Should we test it? <laughs> that is, I mean, ADM is honestly, nothing. It's almost, yeah. I know ADM is nothing. How long did that take to destroy that now? That was... Um, 20 minutes? Not even quite 20, 15 20 minutes? I think it did at least 5 minutes at 200 amps. Yeah, in total, probably we were 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, hold on a sec. It's 13.4. It's volts. still got voltage there. It's not, it's, it hasn't broken. <laughs> it's still connected. I think I can turn it back on. Did the voltage no. break down? No, well, oh, obviously they have turned off. 
The Ooh. inverse turned off. I can, st I can turn them back on. The inverse has turned themselves off. Yeah, because I think it went open circuit for a bit, but... But we're still getting voltage, which means... <laughs> not broken. <laughs> it was on fire and it still works. It's still working. What have we done, Andrew? This fixes itself. I don't even know how I built that. Well, that is going again. We might be able to, this is so strong, we might be able to sell them to the International Space Station. Okay. We're about all the wiring is put a DC heads in. Problem <laughs> sorted. Problem sorted. Yeah, that would have just gone open circuit again. So it is broken. Yeah. But it might still be okay for 40 amps from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but I call that mission accomplished. Okay. We did yeah. break that. We did that. make a fire. We needed the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Okay. That's what it's for. Let's All right. Try these two. I want to try these two with the hundred amp fuse in the age. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's test these two connectors because I think they can handle a lot more than the fifty amps that we rated them to. So but we've got two hundred amp yeah. fuses, and we're going to run one up at hundred amps, and the next one up at hundred amps. Exactly. And check temperatures. And want to see. How long we can keep doing that. Okay. While this looked like a lot of fun, there was a serious purpose to it. We wanted to upgrade the 50 amp connectors oh, to a nice. higher quality 80 amp connector for version 2 of the DC hub. So that will give us a total draw now of about 170 amps roughly. 12.28, 12.7, 12.8. Voltage drop at the moment is about half a volt again, which is quite acceptable. This proved to us that the board could easily handle the additional current. Is that maximum? That's maximum. Let's keep it at that. 80 amps, I want to see 80 amps okay. and see how long okay. that goes. All right, just leave that running. Be careful that we don't melt anything with it. I'll turn the other one on as well. And the second test would be made more challenging because we're going to use the same damaged pieces. board. So actually this is more of a serious test. Yeah. Because we want to know if those two can take 80 amp over a long period of time, both running simultaneously. Yes. Have you got a timer? Because 150 amps is what the whole board is rated to. If we draw more current through it, uh, the main input fuse would eventually blow. There is heat on these cables, but it's yeah. not hot, it's just warm. Slightly warm. But that hasn't changed. It, it got and to that temperature and just and it stayed stable. Yeah. It stayed stable. It's not getting any hotter. No, it's equalizing. And we are we are over the limit for the unit at the moment. We yeah, are. It's between 155 to 160 amps. Yeah. I would call this a very unlikely event <laughs> for oh, the DC yeah. up. <laughs> but it's coping all right. I think we've established how much one of these connectors can handle. Yeah. I think about 150 is... Maxed out, yes. Yeah. The cables are getting a bit warm too. But they're not hot. No. Not hot. And the solder joints aren't loose yet, so it's not that hot that the solder is melting. It's definitely a far way away from catching fire. And it's not harming the board at all. It's the board no. is getting warm, and it's it not is. harming the board. The board can get warm, that doesn't matter. We've seen it can get a lot hotter before something seriously goes wrong. Yeah. The Egon DC Hub version 2.0 is now available, and we can send out internationally. So no matter where in the world you live, you can order one right now. But before you do that, please look in the video description for distributors in your country.